Uh, yeah. So go ahead and start turning off your uh, videos if you guys aren't on, and I'll do the the welcoming stuff, the housekeeping to guests. All right. Hi, welcome. We are uh, a few minutes about to start. Welcome to our virtual health fair. Uh, we have a few attendees. We're just setting up to go live on Facebook right now. Give us a few more minutes. Thank you for joining. All right, welcome to our virtual health fair. I will now throw to our festival coordinator of our health fair, Ms. Latoya Brannan. Good morning and welcome to the 32nd annual Savannah Black Heritage Health Fair. Today, we're doing something very different. We're just totally excited. We are having our first ever virtual health fair. We'd like to thank our sponsors, Savannah State University, South Arts, and the city of Savannah for helping us to make this presentation today. And I'm going to introduce you to our wonderful moderator, Mr. Cameron Walker from St. Joseph Candler Health System. Thank you for that, Latoya. And good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Cameron Walker, as Latoya stated. Uh, welcome to the first virtual uh, Black Heritage Festival Health Fair. Um, thank you again to our sponsors, um, City of Savannah, Savannah State University, as well as St. Joseph Candler Health System uh, for helping make this uh, event possible this morning. So uh, this morning we have some uh, panelist discussions lined up for you all, as well as cooking demonstrations, 
and also um, some exercise, an exercise session. Um, uh, joining me today are representatives from uh, MedBank, um, Planned Parenthood, and I believe we have someone here from Healthy Savannah as well. Um, so to start, do we have Miss Michelle Hoskins here with us this morning? Is Miss Michelle on with us? Um, if not, we will uh, go right along to uh, Ms. Pat Edwards, who uh, is a representative of MedBank. Good morning, Cameron. All right. Um, Cameron, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, I can hear you. <laughs> okay, great. Um, I had to turn my camera back on. Uh, good morning, and thank you for inviting me. I'm Pat Edwards. I'm the executive director with the MedBank Foundation, located right here in Savannah at 836 East 65th Street, building number 12. And I'd like to take a little bit of your time to tell you some things about MedBank. Uh, MedBank has been in Savannah since 1992. And basically what we do is anyone that walks through our door and needs help with getting their medication, that's what we do. Whether you're uninsured or underinsured, we can help you get your medication. Many people are not aware that most of the major drug companies, the ones you hear so much about today, um, Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, AstraZeneca, they have patient assistance programs where you can get your medicine for free directly from the drug company if you qualify. What MedBank does is they facilitate the process for you. If you come, give us a call, go online, our application's online. Uh, if you make us aware that you are in need of assistance with getting your meds, we complete the application for you to the drug company. We get your doctor to sign off. You must be seeing a doctor in order to get your medicine through the drug company. We get supporting documentation, such as a copy of your driver's license, a copy of your income or proof that you have no income. And we also need proof of insurance if you have it. Normally this process takes about 14 to 30 days. But if we can get you approved, you can get your medicine for free, either directly to your home or deliver it to your doctor's office for up to a year. And before that year is up, we will reapply. And if you are still eligible, you can continue to get your medicine for free. We have patients who have gotten their medicine for free for many years. We want to help our community stay healthy. And because of COVID, many people have lost their jobs, lost their insurance, or gone back to work with reduced hours and don't qualify for insurance. We are here to help you. As I mentioned earlier, you can give us a call. We're on the website at medbank.org. Um, I have my number listed if you want to text or just talk to somebody. We can't help you if you don't contact us. If you give us a call, we'll do everything we can to help you get your medication. If you're diabetic, you can't do without your insulin. If you have high blood pressure or you're on heart medicine, you can't do without your medication. Give us a call and we'll do everything within our power to help you get your medicine. In addition to free medicine, we have supplies. Uh, if you're diabetic, and you're seeing your doctor virtually, your doctor has told you to monitor your blood sugar. You can't do that without a glucometer. We have glucometers. If you have a glucometer and you don't have test strips, you still can't monitor your blood sugar the way you're supposed to. We can help. We have high blood pressure machines. And um, I have high blood pressure myself and I had to buy one of these machines. And the cheapest one I could find was $55. Give us a call if you need a monitor. We also have nebulizers and we have access to free eyeglasses for children and adults. If you need medical supplies, give us a call. Also during COVID, we have been going all over town providing what we call COVID 
um, survival kits. We have masks. We have hand sanitizer. We have thermometers. If you are seeing your doctor virtually and you say, well, doc, I don't feel good. Um, I think I have a temperature. You can't tell him what your temperature is if you don't have a thermometer. All of these supplies and our COVID survival kit are made to help you stay healthy. We want everyone in our community to stay healthy and vibrant and live their best life. So if you need assistance with your medication, if you need to be connected to one of the free clinics, give us a call. And we have eight offices. We have four in Savannah. Our headquarters, as I mentioned before, is on East 65th. Uh, we have case specialists located at St. Mary's on the corner of Henry and Drayton. Uh, we're in the J.C. Lewis facility, the new facility behind the mall. Uh, we are in the Good Samaritan Clinic in Garden City. Uh, we have an office in Hinesville, Richmond Hill, Pembroke, Effingham, and Statesboro. So no matter where you live in our service area, if you need help with free medication, give us a call. Thank you. Back to you, Cameron. All righty, thank you for that information, Ms. Pat. Really good information. Um, so please, uh, if you have questions, I hope you, uh, like you said, take down her contact information, definitely get in touch with her uh, to see how, or uh, if you don't personally need those services, you may know somebody that can benefit from those, um, church member, a family member, coworker, neighbor, whomever. So uh, moving right along. Next, we have uh, Ms. Julia Satterley from Planned Parenthood of Southeast Georgia. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here today. I'm going to share my screen with you all um, so that I can talk about our services. Let's see. Oh, just a second. Sorry. There has to be a tech issue or there is not a virtual event. There we go. All right. Um, as Cameron mentioned, thank you. I'm from Planned Parenthood Southeast. I am the health educator here in Savannah. So we have a health center, which I'll be talking about, and also education services, which are currently all virtual. Our health services include gynecological services, testing and treatment for sexually transmitted infections, pregnancy testing, all options counseling, abortion services, birth control methods, all types of birth control methods, emergency contraception, and our health center offers free condoms as well. We serve people of all genders. All people are welcome at our health centers throughout Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi. Our Savannah Health Center is located off of Duren Avenue uh, at 720 East 71st Street. We are open Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 4.30 p.m. We have been seeing patients this entire time. We're just taking precautions in terms of obviously folks wearing masks as well as patients wearing masks. Um, the waiting room is very limited. So things like that, we're being very careful but definitely still seeing patients. Folks can make an appointment online by going to plannedparenthood.org. So if you're one of those folks that doesn't like to talk on the phone, gets nervous about making appointments, you can do it all online. You can also give us a call at the number here, 912-351-0116. Um, obviously I'm the health educator, so I also am going to take advantage to talk to you about our education programs. We provide community health education programs, as well as a separate program that is peer-led sex education. I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. And we participate in a program called Chat Text, where we talk to folks online about different sexual health issues and concerns. So I'll be talking more about all of these things in just a second. Um, our community-based health education programs include communication, gender, healthy relationships, pregnancy options, consent, safer sex, sexually transmitted infections, puberty, contraception, sexuality, and parent sex ed. Um, folks might have seen me before. I do a lot of parent sex ed workshops. I'm a parent myself. I love talking about these things with other parents. How do we talk to our children about these issues? Um, so yeah please invite us for some of those. We'd love to talk with you. Um, 
We normally, when it's not COVID, teach in public and private grade schools, universities, after school programs, community organizations, faith-based organizations all over the place and currently all virtually, but we can still come to your organization virtually. So please let us know. We teach all people, people of all kinds of ages in English and in Spanish. I'm the bilingual educator um, here in Savannah. So there are workshops available in Spanish as well. And our peer-led sex ed programs are actually throughout our affiliate. So we have one here in Savannah, Georgia, which I'm gonna to talk to you about the most. It's called Teen Council. It's for high school students to get trained in all things related to sexual and reproductive health, but also in being able to give presentations and really educate others. Um, the same kind of principles apply to our groups in Atlanta and Birmingham. Just to give you an idea how this program works, I'm going to read off a couple of quotes from our teens who participated in the first year of Teen Council last year, which was partially online and partially in person, thanks to COVID. Um, but this is what they have to say. Teen Council has helped me in a lot of different ways, not only educating me on the various topics, but getting me out of my comfort zone and helping with my social anxiety. For the first time in three years, I branched out. It felt great to say that I did and could and meeting new people along the way. It was open arms all the way around. Um, another member said, I came in knowing basics from school, but TC has broadened my knowledge in a fun learning way. Awesome experience to get to learn and hang out with kids our age. Even though some of us have nothing in common, we share the fact that we care enough to learn and want to teach our peers. And I've gotten to share information with peers that possibly prevented pregnancies and STDs. So there are some other quotes from members of TAG in Atlanta and TASH in Birmingham. I won't read through all of those, but you can see that these programs are a lot of fun for folks and they're really informative and important in our communities. Um, the chat text program is a text line and an online chat that connects our educators with people across the world. We definitely chat with folks out of the country as well to provide medically and non-judgmental sexuality education in English and Spanish. Our educators, um, just on our team here, have chatted with over 1,400 people since July. And you can reach our chat line by going online. If you want to chat online, you can go click on um, Planned Parenthood chat and that'll take you to a link. Or you can also do it over text by texting PP now to 774636. If you would like to schedule a workshop or would like more information about peer education or anything else that we do, you can also contact us at education at ppse.org or give us a call at our Atlanta line. It's 404-688-9305. And that is all that I have. Thank you so much. Let me stop sharing my screen. There we go. All righty. Thank you for that, Julia. Um, so again, um, lots of good information shared in that section. So if you um, heard something that you think you or someone that you may know um, can utilize this information, please get in touch with her. Uh, definitely important and, and, and useful uh, things going on there. So our next speaker, oh, it's me. <laughs> um, so along with being the moderator for this morning, I am also the special programs coordinator at the St. Joseph Candler African American Health Information Center. Um, and a part of us, as, with us being a part of the St. Joseph Candler Health System, um, our mission statement, uh, rooted in God's love, we promote wellness, we treat illness and promote wellness uh, for all people. And a part of where we go about living out that mission statement at the center is by providing 100% free services, um, namely our uh, computer classes, which is an extremely, just really, really great uh, program that we have going on, um, our health seminars, as well as our free exercise classes. So to start, um, as I said initially, our computer program is a, um, a really great program. The center's been open for uh, over 20 years now. Um, and with the computer class being free over the years, it serves uh, several, um, many, many people in the surrounding area, not just Savannah, but in the uh, Southeast region. Um, many people have come in and have been able to take these computer classes again for free and uh, go home and practice the skills or come back to the center and, and practice the skills on our computers. 
and uh, go on to find employment as a result of that. So that's a really great, really great uh, resource that's offered right here in Savannah. Of course, uh, like many other companies and organizations, we have switched to doing the virtual um, uh, program. So the computer classes, coincidentally, are offered uh, virtually right now. So you don't even have to come into the center. You can uh, give us a call. Um, and uh, our person, our, my coworker that's over that, uh, Ms. Tanya, she will get you all set up with that and get the link to you so that you can be taking these classes from the comfort of your own home or wherever you have the internet access to take them. Um, again, it's free. Uh, we do have licensed certified instructors that teach those courses. Um, if you were to take them at their center, it would not be free. <laughs> so again, just trying to distress the fact that these services are they're necessary. You can't even apply for jobs these days without knowing how to uh, use a computer. So we teach things, pretty much everything in the Microsoft suite. So Microsoft Word, um, Excel, PowerPoint, um, Outlook. And I'm not sure if we're doing the QuickBooks. We are teaching QuickBooks. We're doing QuickBooks virtually as well. Um, QuickBooks is being taught. Um, social media, how to use like Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, prior to the virus, we had a keyboarding class uh, where they you know, taught you the basics of how to get a running keyboard, how to use that. So really, really good classes on pretty much any anything you could really would need to know um, on how to operate a, a computer. Um, our next program, our health seminars, which I oversee, um, we have weekly health seminars. Um, I go out into the community and try to find speakers that have some uh, level of expertise on topics to uh, come out to our center. And since the, the virus, again, we've been doing this virtually. Um, but it's been going really well. We've been able to reach a lot of people, again, at their home. Um, coming up, uh, our, our next seminar, I want to say, is Does Food Affect Your Mood? Um, and Miss Ella Williamson, my supervisor, will actually be doing that seminar. Um, uh, following that, we have our monthly morning chat. Uh, this month's morning chat topic is COVID-19 scams. And if you're like me, you're probably sick of hearing COVID-19. Uh, but we did give it that name because, albeit, uh, most of these cyber tricks or scams are not new at all. But over the last year, some of the cyber criminals have found some new, new, uh, clever ways to try and get your money. So uh, we have that coming up. And our movie night towards the end of this month, we will be showing the butler. Um, again, all of those things 100% free. We have tons of speakers coming in from many different organizations. Many of the speakers that you heard uh, today, we've done things with them as well. Um, so definitely, if that's information that you're interested in, I will place my email in the chat as well as um, the center's phone number so you can get in touch with me um, and also join our email list if you're, if you're interested. That's just something where I send out updates weekly about uh, the seminars we have coming up um, and also information that I get sent um, from uh, other, other members in the community that I work, uh, work with sometimes. And then lastly, our exercise program, uh, which is another really great program we offer. Again, 100% free, won't cost you anything, no hitting calls at all. Um, right now, we're offering three courses, uh, three classes rather. On Mondays, we have our dance cardio class, um, which is a little spin on the traditional dance classes where you have an instructor and you follow along. It's basically like a dance party where you, the, uh, the attendee, you have the control to really kind of set your own tempo and your own pace uh, during that hour. The goal is for you to get your heart rate up, as the name says, the dance cardio class. Um, that's the biggest point in, in exercise, trying to get your heart rate up. Um, so you can join us on Mondays from six to seven um, for that. On Tuesdays, we have our first yoga session, again, from six to seven. And then on Wednesdays, we offer uh, an additional yoga session, also from six to seven. So um, those are taught by separate instructors. Um, a little different focuses in each class. Um, but again, really good classes. Uh, yoga is really good for obviously stress reduction, um, learning to be more compassionate to yourself, which all of us could probably use a lesson on. Um, I know I could considering the last year that we've gone through. Um, so yes, if those things sound like something that you're interested in, as I said, I will place my uh, email in the chat um, and that way you can, you can get in touch with me. I'll place the email and the center's phone number it is 6 to 7 p.m., not 6 to 7 a.m., 6 to 7 p.m. for each of those classes. Um, I think I touched on pretty much everything um, that we have going on right now. So thank you all for your time and, and thank you for having me on the panel this morning. At this point, let's see. Latoya, do I send it back to you? Thank you, Cameron. <laughs>
<laughs> we do have a question um, that has been received, and this question is for Julia. The question is, is parental permission needed to participate in the teen council program? Hi, thanks so much for that question. Yes, we do need parental permission to participate in teen council. For our virtual workshops that are for teens, those are free and accessible and we don't need explicit permission for those, uh, but to participate in teen council, which is all virtual at this time, yes, folks do need to um, get parental permission. And we have an application form that interested high school students can fill out. And I would then contact their parents after I talk with them as well and after they fill out an application. Um, but yeah, our teen council application can be found online. If you look at Planned Parenthood Southeast, then you can go to education programs and find the links there, or they can also email us again at education at ppse.org and get our application link as well there. Thanks so much. Thank you. And we do have a question for Ms. Edwards at MedBank. And the question is, can I do my application online if I need to receive services from MedBank or do you need to come to your offices? Oh, yes, ma'am. Our application is online at medbank.org. Um, if you're able to download it, you can fill it out. You can fax it, you can email it. You can drop it in the slot in our door, or you can use snail mail. As soon as we get it, we'll reach out to you. So no, you don't have to come into the office. The application is online. Thank you, Ms. Edwards, for that. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of our panelists for their participation today. We will be sharing with you their email addresses, their telephone numbers, and their website address if you aren't able to see it in the chat. We'd like to give a special thank you to St. Joseph Candler Health System for being the sponsor of our health fair. And now we are going to enjoy a wonderful treat. We have Coach Nikki from Burn Baby Burn, who's going to show us how to do a workout in our homes. Coach Nikki. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Get this together. Good morning, everyone. Let me adjust myself. Okay, we're good. Okay, so good morning, everyone. My name is Coach Nikki Conley. Some people call me Coach KC. Um, and I want to welcome you again. I know you've been welcome before, but I want to welcome you again to the 32nd annual Savannah um, Black Heritage Festival. And I'm so excited to be a part of this again. Again, it was so nice. They asked me to do it twice. So we're going to uh, do some low impact workout today. Um, and I promise you we'll have some fun while we are doing it. All right. So uh, without further ado, let me let me tell you what I do have. You're going to need some space. I got a little rag and I have some water. So get your water and a little rag because you might sweat a little bit. But if you do, that's OK. As Cameron said, you want to get your heart rate up. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to get your heart rate up. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. Um, we're going to start with our warm up. We're going to start with our neck. Okay. So what I want you to do, I just want you to turn your neck to the side. You're going to take it down. To the upside. Back down. To the other side. Back. Okay. Next, guys, we're going to rotate these shoulders out. Right? So what I want you to do, let's get your arms out. Deltoid muscles. You're going to start little. Okay, and we're gradually going to get bigger. Now we're going to rotate them backwards, going, doing the same thing, starting big. And then we're going to get it to small circles. All right. Next, guys, we're going to get these hip flexors, right? There's a whole bunch of them in here. They got different names. We're going to have time to go through them. So what I want you to do is start putting your hands on your hip. You're going to lean forward. You're going to go to the side. Back. Same thing. 
going to rotate it back. We got to warm these muscles up this morning. All right, let's go. We're going to rotate it back the other way. To the side. To the front. All right, all right, all right. Next, guys. We're going to get these hamstrings. I'm going to turn to the side so that you can see me. You're gonna get these hamstrings, this back and your hamstrings. What I ask that you do, use your fingertips to touch your toe tips. Try not to bend your knees. So here we go. Two, three, four. We're gonna hold it for about 15 seconds. All right, let's come back up. Again, stretching that back and these hamstrings. Fingertips to toe tip. Here we go. All right, my friends. Looking good out there. We're going to get this quadricep muscle since we got this hamstring. We're going to get the quadricep muscle. What you, if you need to hold on to something, you can hold on to the wall. Or you can just balance yourself. Find the spot on the floor to look at. We're going to hold it. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. All right, looking good, guys. Let's get this other quadricep muscle. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. All right, now that we've got our warm-up in, let me tell you how this is going to go. We're going to do each exercise for a total of five seconds the first time. That's the first round. The second round, we'll do it for 30 seconds. And then the last round, we're going to do it for 20 seconds, okay? In between those, 50, those uh, the 45 seconds, you'll have a 15-second rest. This is called HIIT, high-intensity interval training, okay? So next, after that, we'll have a 15 minute break, after 15 second break, I'm sorry, after each round, okay? Um, have your water ready. If you need to take a water break, by all means, go ahead, all right? So, let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do, um, I call them hand lift leg tap. So you're gonna take your hand, go up, and tap this foot back, bring the hands down, Alternating feet, okay? So here we go. Low impact, guys. Ready, begin. Come on. Give me a good 45 seconds. Keep moving. Looking good, guys. Yes. And this is working all of your body. Upper body as well as lower body, okay? <coughs> Keep pushing, yes. Looking good. Come on, 15 seconds left. Four, three, two, and one. Now, at the rest, at the rest, you can walk it out. Just keep moving. Now, the next one that we're gonna do it's called a shuffle knee raise. So it's one, two, three. Knee raise, one, two, three. Okay. Guess what, guys? That's 15 second rest. Here we go. Next one. Shuffle and then leg raise. Begin. One, two, three. Shuffle. I'm sorry. One, two, three. Knee. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Knee. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Knee. One, two, three. Uh. Yes. Yes, let's get it, guys. Woo! Uh, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Knee up. Uh uh. Knee up. Uh uh. Looking good, guys. Five seconds. STLP. At the rest. The next thing that we're going to do, these are squat butt kicks. Okay? So I'm going to turn to the side so you can 
see me? Squat, bring that leg up. Squat, bring that leg up. That's 15 seconds, guys. Here we go. Starting now. Ready? Squat, butt kick. Squat, butt kick. Squat, butt kick. Squat, butt kick. Two sides so you can see me. You want to get that foot. As close to your buttocks as possible. I'll let me say the correct term. Your gluteus maximum. Oh yeah, looking good, guys. Yes. Uh, come on, five seconds with it. Okay. 15 second rest. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do, a punch out, okay? So on feet, my feet are showing with the part a little bit more, and we're punching, we're punching, we're punching, okay? You can move the feet too. All right, guys, that's 15 seconds. Ready, begin. Now punch, now punch, now punch, now punch. Now move my feet a little bit too. Punch. Hey, looking good, guys. You can do uppercut punches too. Let's get it. Come on. Get that heart rate up. Bam. Looking good. Woo. Punch. And punch. Move it feet. Move it feet. Move it feet. Move it feet. Now punch. Now punch. 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 Come on. Come on. Don't give up. Don't give up. Yes. You can roll it too. Boom, boom. Hey, three, two, and one. Active breaths. Active breaths. Active breaths. Okay. The next one is called kick out. Kick it out. Kick it out. Kick it out. All right, that's the next one. All right, guys. That's 15 seconds. Next one is the kick out. Ready? Begin. Kick it out, kick it out. Get it up as calm as you can. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Kick out, kick out. Yeah, looking good, guys. Kick out. Woo, burn. Burn, baby, burn. Burn, baby, burn. Burn, baby. Shuffle, 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 knee up. Shuffle, 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 knee 
feet up. Three, two, and one. Active rest. Active rest. Active rest. Don't sit down. All right. The next one, because that is 15 seconds. All right, here we go. Next one was squat, butt kick. Here we go. Ready, begin. Squat, butt kick. Squat, butt kick. To the side, squat, butt kick. Squat, butt kick. Squat, butt kick. Looking good, guys. Uh-huh. Good job. Looking good. Low impact today, baby. Three, two, and one. Active rest. Active rest. Don't sit down. Okay, guys. Guess what? That's 15 seconds. All right. The next one is a punch out. Punch out. So here we go. Here we go. And begin. Punch it out, 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 punch it out. Okay, uppercuts, uppercuts. Now I'm moving my feet as well, okay? So this is a total body workout. I'm on the balls of my feet. Give it to me, give it to me, come on, come on. Three, two, and one, and rest. At the rest, at the rest, at the rest, at the rest, at the rest. All right, guys, next one. That was 15 seconds. The one I forgot to introduce to you. I'm gonna go back and get it for you though. Try to get all that you can get. This one is called a tap jack, okay? Looks like this. Okay, so that's what we're doing. Now you're welcome to do a jumping jack. If you would like, but if you got a knee issue, this is for you. It's low impact today, baby. All right, here we go. Ready? 30 seconds. Begin. Looking good. Hey, hey, let's go. My shirt say, let go. Let go. Let's go. Let go. Come on. Come on. Low impact today, baby. Guess what? That's 30 seconds. All right, 15 second rest. At the rest. At the rest. At the rest. Uh huh, uh huh. All right, guys, the next one was a kick out, okay? And this is where we're here, okay? Here we go. Ready to begin. Kick out. Kick out, kick out, kick out, kick out, balls of your feet, kick out, kick out, kick out, kick out, kick out. If you just need to do one leg at a time, cool. I mean, well, you gotta do one leg at a time. But I was kind of doing mine with a little bounce. You don't gotta bounce with me. Hey! Three, two, 30 second rest. Now, you need some water? Get you some water. Hey. Get you a little dirt. We got a little, we got time. All right, guys. So, time. This round, everything is going to be. 20 seconds. Give me all you got on this. All you got on this last one, this last round. Then we'll hit the abs. And then your workout will be over. You don't got to be in the gym for two or three hours. You don't take all that. Here we go. 20 seconds, baby. Here we go. Hand lift. Let's get it. Let's get it. Come on. Yes. Yes. Tap that toe back. Baby, I told you this is a full body workout. 
three, two, and one. All right, 15 second rest. The next one again was the shuffle. And do the hard one on the make. And all right, guys, that's 15 seconds. Here we go. Ready? Begin. One, two, three. Uh, one, two, three. Here we go. Uh. Yes. 15. Guess what, guys? That's 20 seconds. You got a 15 second active rest. All right, the next one. No 15 up. Squat, foot kick. All right, my friends, here we go. That's 15. Ready? Begin. Squat, foot kick. Squat, foot kick. Woo! Working all of this. Yeah. Quads. Looking good. Guess what? 20 seconds. 15 second rest. Next, we got the tap jack. All right, tap jacks. Your 15 seconds is up. Here we go. Ready? Begin. Now, you can do a jumping jack if you would like, but I'm trying to keep the low impact for you. Here we go. Jump rope and jump if you like. Guess what? 20 seconds. Yeah. All right, the next one, we got 15 second rest, we got punch out, punch out. Move the legs while you're punching out. Active breaths. All right, guys, here we go. Ready, punch it out, punch it out. Move the feet, move your feet, move your feet. You move around. Punch, 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 punch. Yes. 20 seconds, guys. 15 seconds after the rest. All right, guys, that's 15. Last one, kick out. Here we go, guys, let's go. Kick it out, kick it out, kick it out, kick it out. Yeah, kick it out, kick it out, kick it out. If you want to put a bounce to it, you can put it up, bounce. You can put it up, bounce. But you don't have to. 20 seconds. That's 20 seconds. All right, guys. We're headed towards the end. Like I said, we got a great workout. Um, we're going to finish up working on our core. So the first thing that we're going to do we're gonna do a plank. We're gonna try to hold this plank for at least 30 seconds. You give me more, give me more. But we're gonna at least try to hold for 30 seconds. Okay, so what you're gonna do, you're gonna get down on the ground. You're gonna move the camera down. A little. Yeah. So move it up. So down on the ground. Right here, right here. Both your forearms are gonna be on the ground. And your body, the rest of your arm body is holding up. Working on this core. Here we go. Give me a good third. Ready? Begin. All right, guys. Hey, looking good. Open it up. Now, if you need to rest, go ahead. Not a big deal. Try to make sure that button's not in the air, though. Try to make everything flat. All right, three, two, and one. Very good. All right, 15 second rest. We're going to flip over. Okay. The next thing that we're going to do when these 15 are up, hands across the chest, he's going to do a crunch. He's going to bring the knees back to you. Okay. Or you can put your hands right here. Or you can go, guys, just a basic crunch. Okay. Here we go. Ready? Begin. All right, looking good, guys. 30 seconds of punch, okay? Here you're breathing. All right, guys, guess what? 
second rest. And then we're going to flip back over. We'll do a plank for 20 seconds. Then we'll go back into this for 20 seconds. And then your workout for today is done. You just got the 30, 35 minutes of recommended time. Um, I think, well, I mean, something's better than nothing, right? Are right, you go, guys. Here we go. Ready? 20 seconds. Begin. Now, if you get tired, it's okay. You need to take a rest, rest, then get right back to it. Woo! All right, guys, flip over. Looking good out there. All right, guys, the next one, at least 15. Well, you got five seconds now. You got basic crunch on your back. Cross at the ankles, hands by the ears, or you can do your chest, and you're coming up. Here we go. Ready? 20 seconds. Deep in. working out this morning. So we appreciate that. And we appreciate your participation. So you've heard a coach Nikki and our other panelists talk to you about moving more and getting your heart rate up. Now we're going to talk to you about something else that's very important. Has anybody eaten any new fruits or vegetables lately? Have you tried anything new? So for the first time, we're going to have a virtual cooking demonstration. We're joined this morning by Tasha from the 912 Farm Truck, and she'll tell you more about her program as she shows us how to make a healthy recipe. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Tasha, and I am the Education and Outreach Coordinator for the Forsyth Farmers Market. The Farmers Market has been around now going on 11 years. And we also have a mobile market known as Farm Truck 912 that's going on for about five years now. We are a nonprofit organization and our mission is to support farmers and also increase access to healthy food in Savannah. And we do that by having a year round farmers market. We're located in the south end of Forsyth Park across from the um, tennis courts. And so we're there every Saturday year round from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. And then we also have a mobile farm truck that's active in the community from Sundays through Thursdays. And we have different stops throughout the community. And that truck was designed developly to address the food apartheid in Savannah. As amazing as Savannah is, we know there are neighborhoods that are experiencing food apartheid. And what that means is that uh, the nearest grocery store is uh, not within walking distance. 
uh, there are more liquor stores in a neighborhood than there are supermarkets. And even the produce that's available in these supermarkets, it's not comparable to those that are found in some of the wealthier neighborhoods. And so our goal with our farm truck is to make sure that we're bringing fresh, locally grown seasonal produce into these neighborhoods. And these are specifically black neighborhoods. And so our work is to make sure that everyone has access to healthy food. And um, one of the ways that we do that is we had a cooking program known as a Taste of African Heritage. And it was a class um, out of an organization in Boston that's designed to teach about traditional African cuisine. And we think of African cuisine, most of us don't realize that a lot of what we consider as Southern cuisine is actually African cuisine. And there's a lot of stigma attached to Southern food as not being healthy. And the reality is that's not true. Um, a lot of African foods are healthy. A lot of Southern foods are healthy. The way in which we prepare them are some of the ways that we can make them healthier. And so this class was designed to make sure that individuals were reconnected back to their ancestral foods and learn about the best way to cook these healthy foods and to reclaim our um, connection to ancestral foods. And so one of the favorite recipes from our class is um, a black eyed pea salad. So black eyed peas are a staple in Southern cuisine, um, but we typically tend to eat black eyed peas um, mostly during the holidays, right? We eat them at Christmas and we definitely also eat them at New Year's. Um, and so there's a New Year's tradition in the South of eating black eyed peas um, because they represent luck and prosperity. And that actually comes from West African cultures where black eyed peas typically represent um, the unwavering or unblinking eye of the divine or of God, uh, because it looks like an eyeball, right? And so in West African culture, black eyed peas were used to symbolize fertility and divinity and abundance. And they were actually cooked by wealthy individuals and given to less fortunate individuals um, to remind them of um, reciprocity and abundance that was present in their life. And so we see that cultural tradition carry on today um, in Southern cuisine. We see that history of the Black Eyed Peas representing abundance. And whenever we eat Black Eyed Peas, you know, we're tapping into that ancestral legacy and resiliency um, by eating these foods. Um, one of the things that we know about Black Eyed Peas is not only are they native to West Africa, but they were actually brought over. Um, the historians think they were brought over in two ways. One, they were brought over to feed enslaved individuals during the transatlantic slave trade. Um, but they were also brought over by enslaved individuals and we believe they were actually braided into their hair. And so if you think about when you cornrow your hair, you know, there are ways to hide small things. And so historians actually think that our ancestors hid things like rice grains and uh, things like beans and black eyed peas into their hair as a way of survival and to plan for this journey ahead. And so again, whenever we're eating these foods, we're tapping into that cultural um, resilience and legacy. And of course, black eyed peas are really healthy. They're full of fiber um, and anything that's dark in color is rich in antioxidants. So it's always great to add it to our diet. And so uh, we all know that black eyed peas can take a while to cook. And so my little hack is to use black eyed peas that are in the can. Um, and so one of the things that happens with a lot of our food is a lot of what we consider to be black food or Southern black cuisine are typically eaten around certain holidays, right? Like I was saying with black eyed peas, we usually eat them around um, Thanksgiving or New Year's or Christmas. And I was talking with a friend about this, Latoya actually, and we were talking about this class and why it's so important to teach individuals about the historical narratives connected to our food. Because it seems like a lot of black food has this, um, this stigma that is centered around the seasonal rhythm, right? So there's a seasonal stigma attached to black foods. We eat them during the holidays and then that's really it. Uh, of course, we know that our elders definitely eat black foods year round, but as you know, the younger generation, we're finding that we're not eating these foods as often. And so it's really important that we, it's really important that we eat these foods more often. 
So this black eyed pea salad uses a uses canned black eyed peas, um, much quicker to cook. Um, this is actually a no cook recipe, and then it's no salt added. And so one of the things with using canned produce is oftentimes there's a lot of salt in uh, canned produce. So the first thing you wanna do whenever you're using canned produce items is you wanna just rinse them. And so we're gonna add two cans of black eyed peas into a bowl. And then we're gonna add about a cup of diced cucumbers. So cucumbers are about 90% water and what's really great is, you know, we're always talking and thinking about um, adding more water and drinking our water. And one way to do that is we can actually eat our water. So if we're eating foods that are high in water, such as melons and cucumbers and other fruits, we're actually adding water to our diet that way. And we don't have to be as stressed out about drinking our eight cups of water. Um, we also have some diced um, red uh, bell peppers, and that's about a half a cup of diced red bell pepper. And bell peppers are high in antioxidants. Anything that has this beautiful bright red color, we know is really good for our cardiovascular health, so it supports our heart. And it's also really high in vitamin C, which is great for your immune system. And that is the start of the salad. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a vinaigrette. A lot of the ways that we add excessive calories and unhealthy ingredients to our diet is by using store-bought dressings and sauces. And so a good way to get around that is to actually make your own dressings. So I have here in a mason jar uh, about a fourth a cup of olive oil. And olive oil is really great to use when you're making your own dressings. Um, because olive oil is really high in omega-3s, which is great for your heart. So this is a healthy kind of fat. Uh, then we're gonna add um, some apple cider vinegar. We're gonna add about two capfuls. One of the reasons I really love this recipe, it's really versatile. There's not a lot of measuring. As you can see, I'm not really measuring anything. Um, so it's great. Um, you can really switch out the ingredients for whatever you have on hand. I'm also gonna add about a teaspoon of honey and I'm using some local honey. Honey is loaded with antioxidants and it's so good for you. And this is the honey that we actually carry at the farmer's market and on the farm truck. Uh, it's by Reed Bees Honey, um, Reedy Bees Honey. And um, it's really great for allergies too. So as springtime approaches and if you are someone that experiences allergies, adding raw local honey to your diet is really beneficial. Then I'm gonna add about a, a teaspoon of uh, Dijon mustard, which is gonna give this um, vinaigrette a little bit of spice. And then I'm just seasoning with some black pepper, some salt, and some cumin, right? So cumin is a spice that's used a lot in cuisines from Africa as well as um, Asia. And cumin is great because one of the things that we do, we know it, you know, in African cuisines and Southern cuisine and black cuisine, we use a lot of seasonings. And we wanna be mindful of the seasons that we use. We typically tend to over salt our food. And we know that excess sodium in our diet can lead to things like hypertension and high blood pressure and diabetes. And so using other seasonings like uh, apple cider or Dijon or um, dried spices like cumin really takes away from the need for excessive salt, but it still flavors your food. And I'm also gonna add a little bit of diced onions. Onions are high in antioxidants. Um, they're really great for you and they support your immune system. And of course they have that really distinct flavor and a nice crunch. They're always great to add into a salad. Um, and the juice of one lime. So whenever you're making any kind of homemade dressing, um, olive oil is great. A little bit of um, citrus is also good or some kind of acid such as a lemon or apple cider vinegar or the juice of a lime. And so I'm gonna squeeze a lime, a juice of one lime into my little vinaigrette. And I really like making my vinaigrettes in mason jar. Um, and this is the mason jar. And what's really good about this is you can mix the vinaigrette right in this jar. And then as you're gonna see, I'm gonna close it up to shake it. And it's literally, uh, I can just refrigerate it as is and it will last in the fridge for about two weeks or so. Um, so it's a great way to make your dressings ahead of time and then store them in a convenient way in the refrigerator as well. I'm gonna add another um, lime juice. 
And we can add a little bit of heat to this vinaigrette if you want. If you're someone that likes a little bit of kick, you can add some cayenne pepper, um, some chili powder. I'm gonna add actually a little bit of olive oil. I'm looking at the ratio from of the sauce to what I have in this bowl. And it looks like we need a little bit more. And again, that's the great thing about this dressing or about this whole salad is you really don't need to measure. Um, and then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a shake, right? So it's super simple. This is actually, this would make a really great salad dressing as well. Um, it's an easy vinaigrette. It could go over, um, it could also go over meat if you are baking chicken, for example. It's a great way to season your meats. Uh, so now I have this vinaigrette. And again, you can refrigerate this just as is like this. And I am going to pour it over my black eyed peas. And again, these are just black eyed peas that are in the can. Diced cucumbers, red bell peppers. And I'm pouring this delicious vinaigrette over these ingredients. And I think we have just enough. And then I'm gonna give it a stir so that the juices combine and everything gets flavored really well. Um, and it's, as you can see, it's really simple to make, really delicious. We're gonna add just a little bit of salt over the top of that. And I also have some fresh cilantro. Again, fresh herbs are a great way to season our food. We're adding, um, you know, lots of chlorophyll and antioxidants from the fresh herbs, and it takes away from our need to use excessive salt um, when we're seasoning our food. I'm also going to add a little bit of jalapenos. Um, adding fresh peppers to our meals is another great way to get um, additional um, nutrients. Peppers are high, so whether that's bell peppers, um, habanero peppers, chili peppers, they're high in something known as capsaicin, which is great for inflammation in the body. So if you have a lot of joint pain or arthritis, um, adding things like peppers to your diet can be really beneficial because they decrease the inflammation in your body and can help with pain management. And so this is our beautiful salad. And that's really it. It's really simple. It's, um, it's served best uh, when it has some time to chill. So as you can see, this was two cups. This could feed a family easily multiple times for a meal. Um, so I would just cover this and put this in the refrigerator and let it chill. So this is a cold salad. Um, so it's great any time of the year, but it's also great during the summer, which again, it's one of the times where we don't typically eat black eyed peas. And it's really simple and easy to make, really affordable as well. You know, two cans of black eyed peas, um, you know, less than $2 in the grocery store. And then these are usually kitchen staples that most of us have on hand. Uh, so I hope you enjoy the recipe. One of the things I like to do with this is I like to serve it alongside baked chicken. You can actually make it into a cold pasta dish. There, you can add it over to salads, which is another great way if you're trying to incorporate more salads into your diet. Um, the black eyed peas are loaded with protein, a lot of fiber, and so it's great to add them to salads um, if you find yourself you're not as full after eating a salad. And you would literally just take it and pour it over your salad. And the great thing is there's this dressing on there. So it, your salad already would have a dressing and there's more dressing left over to be used as salad dressing. Um, so this is the cold black eyed pea salad. It's delicious, really easy to make. And again, when we're eating our ancestral food, we're tapping into the cultural legacy of our ancestors. We're tapping into delicious produce that's a part of our history. You know, there is the stigma that black food is not healthy, that Southern food is not healthy, that African food isn't healthy. And that's absolutely untrue. And we find that actually the more food that you eat, um, similar to your ancestors, the healthier you become. There have been so many studies that show if you go back to eating the way your ancestors ate, um, you actually are healthier because of course they were eating less processed foods. They were cooking more, they were using fresh produce. And so we hope that you are able to make this recipe, try it out. Please let us know if you like it. You know, at the Forsyth Farmer's Market, we're not currently doing any classes. So our Taste of African Heritage class is on a break because of COVID. So we don't have any classes coming up, but we're always doing things virtually. Uh, our market is year round. So the farmer's market is actually going on right now. The farm truck is also open and um, in the community. And one of the things I wanted to let you all know about the farmer's market and the farm truck is that we offer uh, snap 
um, doubling. So for folks that receive food stamps or use EBT card for shopping, if you shop at the farmer's market or on the farm truck, you're able to double the amount of money that you have. So let's say you have $20 on your EBT card. If you're shopping for fresh fruits and vegetables at the farmer's market or at the farm truck, you actually get $40 worth um, of produce. And that's an amazing resource, especially now when times are tough for everyone. So we hope you come out and visit us on the farm truck or at the farmer's market. And we're also able to, um, to provide support with doing SNAP enrollments. So if you are someone, or if you know someone that you think might be eligible for SNAP but doesn't currently receive benefits, that's something that I can help you all with. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed our little cooking demonstration. Thank you so much to the Black Heritage Festival Committee for having me. Uh, if you want more information about the farmer's market, the farm truck, about enrolling in SNAP, or to see a printed version of this recipe, just visit our website at foresightfarmersmarket.com. And you could also send me an email. I'm at ffm.outreach.ed at gmail.com. Thank you all so much. Take care. Happy Black History Month. Bye. We have a few questions for you, Tasha, in the chat before we oh, sign off. Awesome. One of the questions is, will you be able to post the recipe for the black IP salad? Absolutely. So this web, this recipe is already on our website. If you go to ForsythFarmersMarket.com and you search black IP salad, it will come up. Okay. And one person is asking, will you please repeat for us right now all the ingredients that were used in the salad? Absolutely. So we have two cans of black eyed peas. We have about a half a cup of diced cucumbers, uh, a cup of diced red bell peppers. Um, and that's it as far as the actual salad. For the vinaigrette, we use some olive oil, apple cider vinegar, Dijon mustard, honey, salt, black pepper, cumin, uh, about a quarter cup of diced onions, uh, juice of one lime, and then we also topped it off with some jalapeno peppers and cilantro. I think that's everything. <laughs> and we have one other one. Um, explain how a rich, simple, healthy salad recipe like this, the black eyed pea salad, made accessible to those who suffer as a result of food injustice in the food deserts that are in the Black communities. And I think you touched on that some. I did. So thank okay. you so much for that question. You know, we know that folks who are experiencing food apartheid, so who don't have access to healthy food uh, because of conditions outside of their control, one of the things that happens is we end up eating more um, packaged foods. We end up eating foods that are easier to cook because sometimes these are the foods that are available most easily, an example, at a corner store or a place like a Dollar General or a dollar store. The reality is there are a lot of folks who, that do their grocery shopping at those places and there's nothing wrong with that, but those places don't have fresh produce. And so when you're experiencing food insecurity because you live in a neighborhood that doesn't have access to healthy food, you're more likely and your children are more likely to eat packaged foods. And these foods are typically high in sodium they're high in um, processed food. They're, they're high in, in processed unnatural ingredients. They're high in food colorings and food dyes, which have been shown to impact behaviors. And so children growing up in these conditions, for example, might have what we would look like ADHD, but in reality, they're just really not able to concentrate because they have an excess amount of sugar and food dyes in their body because that's what their families have access to. And so, you know, one way for us to combat that is by eating more healthy, fresh produce. And again, we realize that is uh, an access issue. And so shopping at places like farmers, the farmer's market or the farm shop, as well as supporting your local farmers. You know, that's one of our goals here at the farmer's market is to support local farmers, especially now um, who, you know, the restaurants aren't buying from them as often. And so they need our support because they're growing in our community the money that we give them, it's circulating back into the community. And so when we buy from them, we're able to support farmers so they can continue to grow this healthy food and bring it right to us. And so hopefully when we're eating this way, it inspires the farmers to grow more food and it develops this relationship of reciprocity where our communities can get access to these foods because we're cultivating relationships with the people that grow these foods.
Thank you. And we have one person who wants to um, echo about the doubling of your EBT benefits. When you do come to the farmer's market, you're going to get double the benefits from your SNAP card. And we have a question that asks, are the, all the, are the foods sold at the farmer's market organic? Oh, that's a great question. So a lot of the foods at the farmer's market are certified organic. What that means is the USDA requires um, for you to be certified organic, you have to go through a very lengthy and expensive process for that certification. So there are some farmers that we have at the market that uh, carry this certified organic label, but mostly what we deal with are small family farms who don't actually have access to the resources to become certified organic. What that means though, is they're actually using they're not using pesticides or they're they're doing some of the things that would be considered organic, but they're just not able to afford the process to become certified. So most of our farmers are using sustainable ways to grow their produce. They're limiting use of unhealthy things like pesticides. They have a healthy relationship with the land and they compost and they do all the things that would be considered organic. Um, so what we like to say is we, you know, organic has, um, its own uh, expectations. And it's a great standard to have, but it's simply not uh, accessible for all farmers. And we, we try to include farmers that are small farmers. We, we have farmers that are first time farmers as opposed to large family farms. We have black farmers. And these are folks that face apps um, you know, that have limited funds. And so they are using sustainable methods to grow their produce, but they might not have that certification um, as of yet. We have one final question for you, and that is, do you know approximately how many Black farmers are certified vendors for the Foresight Farmers Market Food Truck Program? That is a really great question. So our farm truck is very intentional about buying from uh, mostly Black farmers. So the farmers market is open to everyone. We have all kinds of farmers at the market. Um, but because the intention of the farm truck is to bring hash fresh, healthy foods directly to um, communities that are experiencing food apartheid. And most, again, again, most of these communities are Black communities. We try to buy from Black farmers. So again, we're developing this relationship, bringing food grown by Black farmers into Black communities. And um, off the top of my head, we have, um, oh goodness, we have an amazing um, farmer from St. John, or, John's Island in South Carolina, and they have been a part of our farmer's market for a very long time. That's Miss Helen and her husband. So that's off the top of my head. Um, I really can't recall. We have Mr. Hayes who sells amazing watermelon juice during the summer. And he has been about a part of the farmer's market forever. Um, we have Miss Belinda from Unforgettable Bakery who's of Haitian descent. And she has an amazing bakery as well as Caribbean food. Um, these are just off the top of my head, but what we do is if you are interested in looking at the list of all of our farmers, as well as the farmers of color, um, if you visit our website, foresightfarmersmarket.com, we have a list of all of our vendors. And so you're, you'd be able to, um, see for yourself the list of vendors, or you can just come to the farmer's market and see for yourself. Thank you so much, Tasha, for your time today and sharing this wonderful recipe with us. We are so grateful to you for your time and sharing this information. We will post the recipe and the link to the Foresight Farmers Market. You will see that on the Black Heritage Trustful website. For those of you who are in the Zoom, you'll see it here in the chat as well. I'd also like to take this time to thank our sponsors, St. Joseph Candler Health System for helping us provide this platform today. And also, if you are in the chat or joining us on Facebook, please take a look. There is a link for a survey. We would like to encourage you to complete that survey to tell the Black Heritage Festival Committee of your input on how did you enjoy this platform, how did you enjoy the panelists, and for us being virtual. So give us some feedback, please. That link is in the chat on the Zoom platform, and it's also on the Facebook stream that's going right now as well. Thank you again, Tasha. 
We I are, we have well. talked about moving more. We've had Coach Nikki get out and show us how to get moving. We have gotten our heart rate up and now Tasha has given us a wonderful healthy recipe. Now we're gonna be joined by Miss Nichelle Hoskins from Healthy Savannah, who's gonna give us some thoughts on how we can connect with Healthy Savannah and their services here in our community. Hey, good morning, everybody. It is so good to see at least some of your names. I see some friends out there. Um, and I am Nichelle Hoskins. I work with Healthy Savannah and we work under a grant called Racial and Ethnic Approaches to Community Health. And through that, we are we actually we are partners with Tasha and Farm Trip 912. And in fact, if you haven't tried that uh, salad, it is amazing. She takes that salad on the road and she makes smiles whenever she takes them. And we also, I can't say enough about uh, the course that she take, teaches on uh, African food ways. It is really accessible to everyone and, uh, and delicious, the food is delicious. But um, one of the things that Healthy Savannah is working on and has been since October is uh, decreasing the incidence of seasonal flu. Now, I know we are living in COVID, so seasonal flu seems kind of secondary, but you can get the seasonal flu and have COVID at the same time. And we're working to share information about the flu and to connect people who want the vaccine with the vaccine. Uh, seasonal flu season ends in February, so it's not too late to, uh, to get that shot. It usually ends in February, but actually sometimes it, it spreads into May. And either way, you, you wanna be covered uh, even before you get your COVID shot, if you plan to get that. Uh, uh, some of our uh, additional work is in COVID-19 and talking, again, talking about the hesitation that we have, some justifiable distrust that we have, uh, we sometimes have in vaccines and medicine in general. And uh, our aim is to give our people the information we need to make the decisions we need to make for our families and ourselves. Uh, I have attached in this chat uh, a page from the CDC, so the Centers in Disease of, for Disease Control and Prevention uh, funds us. And uh, they we have posted information that will help individuals make decisions about whether or not to go out, um, and you know, and how to and, and where to go out when they when you do go out. So take a look at that link and uh, and feel free to move around the CDC site because there is a whole bunch of information about uh, not only COVID and the seasonal flu, but many other conditions. And I have to remind everybody that we have gotten hit disproportionately hard by COVID and usually get disproportionately hard by seasonal flu as well. We're more likely to be hospitalized, we're more, and we're more likely to die as a result of the seasonal flu as well as COVID. Two entirely different flus, but, uh, but both devastating to the African-American and Hispanic community. So uh, please take a look at that link and please feel free to give me, uh, send me an email. I'm at Nichelle at HealthySavannah.org. My first name is spelled N as in November, I C H E L E. And if you would love, if you want some more information, I'm happy to either share it with you or find it if I don't have it. And if you have uh, some comments or opinions about either the COVID 19 vaccine or the seasonal flu vaccine, I'm really interested in knowing um, the in people's attitudes about the flu. This is going to help us talk about the flu much more effectively if I know uh, how we think about it. So thank you so much to everybody, to Latoya and everyone for having, uh, letting me bring up the rear. And uh, hopefully next year, I'll be able to see you face to face. Thanks. Thank you, Nichelle, for sharing that with us. And we do hope next year we will be face to face doing this. Again, we're going to share Nichelle's email with you and the Healthy Savannah website if you haven't seen it. We will put that on the Facebook stream as well as in the chat. 
here for those of you who are joining us on Zoom. I would like to thank you guys for joining us today. We'd like to thank St. Joseph Candler Hospital System for being our sponsor today. We would also like to invite you to join the virtual vendors booth. Those are open. You go to savannahblackheritagefestival.org slash virtual events. And there you can see the vendors who are still selling their items. Even though we are in person, the vendors are still selling items to you. And we'll be happy to communicate with you about shipping or how to get you those items. Also, there's a next event today. It begins at one o'clock. It is called the Arthur's Corner. So we're gonna have self-published authors promoting their books, sharing with you and telling you where you can get their books and what they're about. Again, that begins at one o'clock. You can join via the Zoom platform if you have registered or come back here to Facebook Live and you'll see us stream it again. Thank you for participating. Don't forget to complete our survey. Thank you again to our sponsors and all of our participants for today. Thank you. Have a great day.